Here's a quick video on half double crochet from start to finish using markers to track the beginning of the row. First thing I need to make a slip knot. So I make a circle with my yarn and then I reach in and grab the yarn, whichever one's on top. And I'm just gonna grab it real close. I'm not gonna pull the end through. Instead, I'm gonna gather the other ends in my other hand and pull. And this is my slip knot. You can tell it's a slip knot because it disappears. So one more time, here's my circle. Short ends on top, there's a couple inches dangling. I'm gonna reach into the circle, grab that yarn, but real close. Other hand gathers up the ends, and then I pull, letting it slide. Here's my slip knot. My hook goes into it, and I gently pull to snug it up. We wanna keep it a little loose. There are different ways to hold the yarn. What I show is to hold up all your fingers like a high five, and bend your index finger down, and then go away from you to catch the yarn, and around one more time. My index finger is going to stay up in the air to tension the yarn and my middle finger and thumb are going to hold on to the chain, the uh, slip knot here, which is the bump right below the loop on the hook. I'm going to make chains. The hook's going to come towards me, away from me and under the yarn. A little kind of turn of the hook here because it's easier to get through. I'm going to pull through and watch the yarn is moving along on my index finger and taking some yarn from the ball as I need it. To reset, I want the loop on the big part of the hook. I'm going to hold on close. And again, I'm going to catch the yarn, pull it through, hold on close, make sure it's loose. Now, this maneuver is called a yarn over. I wish it was called a hook under because really the hook comes towards you and then under the yarn as it goes away from you. So I'm going to do a few more of these chain stitches. And notice that I'm moving up my holding fingers every stitch. And you can see the yarn drawing across my index finger. If you've got a really tight grip on the yarn and it just doesn't move, then you're gonna have trouble now and your next row is gonna be tight. So here's my chain. One side looks flat, kind of like a braid, but not exactly. The other side looks bumpy. There are six different ways you can put your hook into this on the next row, going in or any one or any combination of two strands. My preference is to go under the bumps on the back because that gives you a really nice bottom edge. First though, I'm gonna put my marker into the last stitch that I made. So it's right here, right underneath the loop that's on the hook. That's gonna help me out at the end of the following row. Then I'm gonna find my third chain from the hook. So there's one with the marker, second one, third one, that's the one I want. I'm gonna hold on next to it. I'm gonna do with that yarn over, AKA hook under, maneuver first, hold on if you feel like it. Then I'm gonna insert my hook underneath that bump on the back of the chain, yarn over, and draw up a loop back through the bump and pause there. I have three loops on my hook. One I started with, one that I got with a wrap, and one that is a loop I've pulled up through the existing chain. I'm gonna move my holding fingers a little closer, then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops. I finished one half double crochet. Now I'm gonna go to the very next chain, no more skipping, yarn over, into the bump of the chain, Yarn over and draw up a loop through the fabric. I have three loops. Move my hold, make sure it's loose. Yarn over and pull through all three. And we repeat. Find your next chain, yarn over, into the bump of the chain. Yarn over and draw up a loop, you have three. Hold on close, yarn over and pull through all three. Find your next chain, hold on next to it. Yarn over, insert your hook into the bump. Yarn over and draw up a loop, you have three. Yarn over and draw through all three. If you're struggling, check to see if you're holding on tight to this yarn and not letting it through. It's much, much easier if it's loose and you should feel this flow set every time I catch yarn and pull it through, the yarn moves across my index finger. On this first row, when you are at the end, you're done. There's nothing tricky on this first row. So here I am finished my row. I've gone all the way across. To start a new row, I'm going to make two chains. You might want to make the loop a little big before the second one so there's a nice loose chain. And then I can mark that chain. It's right below the loop on the hook. I'm going to turn it around. Now these two chains are what we call the turning chain and they count as the first stitch of the row. So I'm going to skip the first real stitch, which is here, the first place I could go. And I'm going to go into the second one. And as we do this, I'm going into what looks like a V on the top edge. It's under both strands. So I'm going to yarn over, skip the first stitch, go into the second one, make sure I'm under both strands of that V, yarn over and draw up my loop. I have three, yarn over and draw through all three, 
and repeat. No more skipping. So here's my next stitch. I'm holding on next to it. Yarn over, go in, yarn over and draw the loop. Here's my three. Yarn over and draw through all three. Someday you may learn about front loop only or back loop only, but for now the default is to go under both strands and have that whole V. It feels better and looks better in most cases as well. Now, as I get towards the end of my row, I've got kind of a small row here. I've got one more V here. It gets a little messy at the end, so don't worry if that one is a little harder to find. Just track it down. And after I've gone through all the Vs of my half double crochet stitches, I need to go into the turning chain. And that's why I have the marker here as a reminder. There's one more stitch. So you can find what looks a lot like the V on top. That can be a little hard to go into. So I don't think it is very different if instead you go under these two strands here, which is where your marker is. It's a really subtle difference and if it's way easier for you, it is absolutely worth it. So then I'm going to make two chains and this marker that I just used, I can take out and move it up to the chain I just made, turn it over and again the turning chain counts as a stitch. I'm going to skip the first stitch and go into the second one. And when I get to the end of this row, I will be finishing my row by working a stitch into the last V, which is a little messy at the end. And the final one is going to go into the turning chain, ideally under two strands. So these two that I'll crisscross here are just fine. And that's going to give me really nice, even edges. All right, I hope that was helpful.